Welcome everybody to ESCC. It is game number three for this stream, I do believe. And it's gonna be Energy Pacemaker going up against Terrorblade in this best of one. But of course, we're Hevla TV, your English coverage, and I'm not gonna be going solo. I'm also gonna be joined by Grindy Stream. And how are you doing in this fine morning for you, I guess, already? <laughs> well, I mean, I have been staying up pretty much all night, so it's kind of night, I guess. I don't know. Either way, it's been a pretty interesting evening, night, whatever it is, of Dota. We just saw Energy Pacemaker take on Beach Gaming Potential, and they're fresh off of a victory there, sitting at 3-1 pretty comfortably inside the group stages. If they win four of the games, they're pretty much guaranteed to be inside the top four, so that'd be great for them and put them in a slot in the playoffs. So let's see if they're going to be able to do that up against Terrorblade. As far as the teams are concerned, I have never seen Terrorblade as a team actually play, so it's going to be a new experience for me. Yeah, they're... I guess gonna be an up and coming team or maybe just a solid team in the tier 2 Chinese scene but Energy Pacemaker they have had really mixed results at times they've even like taken down LGD IG as well beforehand but that was like a couple of months ago already by now I think but they can be strong and they probably will continue this just streak here as well and of course they did get their hands on the Lesh rack so that's already something in their favor possibly but Knowing now that they're up against the Storm Spirit, Leshrac stun may not be enough. Absolutely not. They're going to need some sort of reliable setup for that stun. Clockwork also probably not going to cut it. Although Earthshaker against a Clockwork is a little bit awkward. Inside the laning stage, the Leshrac can pretty much be completely stonewalled by the Earthshaker. If there's a good Fissure Block, Storm Spirit as most heroes can very easily capitalize on that. It makes it very difficult for Lishrak to go aggressive into the storm, which in a 1v1 or a true 1v1 situation would be uh, something that Lishrak would be interested in doing. Our next stage of bands is going to come out with Ancient Apparition and Witch Doctor taken away. Yeah, so which Apparition, do you actually see it like banned at all in the Western scene? Or is it something that the Chinese just like more? Because I know that has been the case in the past. I really haven't seen it banned all that much as of late, and I think he does deserve a little bit more play, and I think the Chinese are onto something. He's really good in those early skirmishes, especially when you're contesting runes. If anybody gets caught out with chilling touch, it's pretty much a guaranteed first blood, but um, outside of that, this might just be a targeted ban. They might be interested in picking up something that relies very heavily on healing, like a Necrophos or a Huskar, maybe. And Slark. That can yeah. also be the pickets. Also a hero that has kind of been forgotten a little bit, but we'll see, and now Energy Pacemaker, even burning out an anti-mage. To be honest, if they had really wanted, they could have even gone for it themselves, being up against a Storm Spirit already, so that could have been pretty nice, but... Of course, most teams just don't favor anti-mage, or don't favor that heavy of a farming style, I suppose. Now though, also a gyro band out, not all that shocking. No, absolutely not. It's going to be a pretty standard draft with the exception of being just a ban here and there. They're maybe a little bit out of the ordinary. Terrorblade now to follow up the Storms for an Earthshaker could pretty much go in any direction they want to. And the direction they want to go to is Naga Siren. Um, although it has been played as a support more recently as of late, just having that song to reset after initiations, this is probably going to be a farming hero for them. Most likely and... It's maybe somewhat risky, especially knowing you're up against a Lishrak mid lane. If it's going to be a Naga Siren, it may not be the most fun of times, but I do expect the Storm Spirit to go into the mid lane instead. And even then, Lishrak is a hero that can just start putting a lot of pressure, especially if the Clockwork is there as well. Of course, Clockwork does need a level 6 before that, but Energy Pacemaker, they now have the option to just go for an aggressive enough lineup. To make it so that the Naga Siren's Radiance like won't come at all, or it's gonna come at a time when it doesn't really matter all that much anymore. Yeah, absolutely. And the Lion is also going to offer them the way to instantly kill those illusions. Really nice for them to have, and also just instant disable in general. A good hero to have up against Terrorblade's lineup. So Terrorblade, they do need one more support plus probably an offlaner at the moment. Tusk unfortunately banned out, so that can't be an option for them as an offlaner, but what other heroes could they go for? I mean, I don't even really know what's popular in the Chinese scene at the moment as offlaners these days. A Beastmaster would work pretty nicely for them, and just in general, a solid offlaner. Um, 
Outside of that, who else could fit the bill? Phoenix is really nice in combination with the Naga Siren. Really easy to set up for Supernovas with this song. Um, if they feel that the lane is conducive to that. But for now, it's just going to be a Keeper of the Light. This is a very passive supporting duo, but it, it's going to pump the Naga Siren starts to get full of mana, which is absolutely amazing. The split push pressure of a Keeper of Light plus a Naga Siren is absolutely absurd. It's a little bit worrisome that they have so many of these squishy targets for Clockwork to go on. So if the Clockwork initiations are on point, the Earthshaker and the Keeper of Light both could very easily be food for him. But in general, Terrorblade, these heroes are very annoying to play against and are very good at what they do. Yeah, and up against Lightning Storm, for example, as well, Keeper to Light, he can definitely stay at a distance, just channeling his Illuminate, casting his abilities. Earthshaker can also stun from quite a distance, and although the Lightning Pounces may still get to them, it's a little bit less likely, or at least Leshrac, like can't run up to them that easily with Pulse Nova, for example. So, a little bit of a positive, I suppose, with running these supports here. But of course, the combination is pretty decent, like Fissure Block into an Illuminate as well on any lane, really. But Energy Pacemaker, do they, for example, want to pick up something that naturally builds PKB? Just because they are going to be up against oh, so much sure. magic. And also, not to be underestimated, the mischance from Radiance coming out from Nuggets are also going to be annoying for most of their carries, and as, uh, especially IO partners, too. Um, let's see, what's that IO partner going to be for them? Tiny's probably going to be banned by Terrorblade, even though Energy Pacemaker should have something else in mind. Yeah, it's... If it's not the tiny ban, I'm gonna have to say it's gonna be like the surprise of the day for me. Just because it is the strongest combination with the IO, I think. Plus, of course, just Aghanim Scepter, lots of cleave damage to deal with those Naga Siren illusions later on. So, Terrorblade, they're thinking about it, but in the end, they're probably gonna decide to just ban it out anyway. Yeah, probably so. Um, hmm. What else would it be other than a tiny as the top priority for energy pacemakers combination with the IO? I honestly can't think of anything great. Maybe a Sven would be interesting to see. A natural BKB carrier and would also fill a similar niche to that tiny, although maybe he wants to fight a little bit more early. Yeah, it's possible. I suppose if they want to just experiment. Even a Chaos Knight wouldn't be like horrible just because you would have a really long disable or long duration disable the thing is if you have like a Sven or a Chaos Knight Storm Spirit may be able to pull lightning away before that stun lands but even up against the Naga Siren Chaos Ball can do quite a bit of work it if you're lucky enough if you get the four second stun it may be so that you throw the Chaos Bolt Naga Siren starts channeling his ultimate but the Chaos Bolt is still flying so he gets stunned and he can't actually TP out in time before the song ends again or something like that but of course, that's like grasping at straws pretty much, but it's just me hoping for a Chaos Knight in general, just because it's so rarely play played. Yeah, since they banned out the Bristleback, I think it is just going to be a straight up tiny for energy pacemakers. So Terrorblade are going to have to find ways to deal with it. Their heroes are pretty good at kiting tiny in general, although they don't have the greatest amount of slows. If you mana leak the tiny, there's not much he can do about it. His mana pool already is pretty abysmal. And unless Io has like Soul Ring or Arcanes, which are fairly rare to see picked up on Io, Soul Ring more than Arcs, of course, but um, yeah, he might end up just not having enough mana for his combination, which could be detrimental. They're still lacking the offlaner, presumably, although there is a chance that we see Earthshaker throw in that offlane role. I think it's unlikely. Yeah, it's probably not gonna happen. It, it just wouldn't be good times for that hero. And oh, Terrorblade, do go for the Beastmaster you already mentioned earlier during the draft. It is definitely just such a good hero, and especially since you do have to now fight the Vision War, up being up against an IO and trying to keep your Naga Siren safe, the Hawk may be like the key thing that Terrorblade just needs to master in this game. Keep Vision up on IO and Tiny if they can. Or at least like vision near the Naga Siren so they can at least see the relocate coming. I think as a team, Terrorblade's lineup meshes a little bit better. All of her heroes are kind of focused on a singular purpose of getting the Naga Siren to a point where she becomes unmanageable. Although Ty or Tiny and Io can feasibly deal with a lane down of creeps. When you have all these illusions, it's going to be very annoying for them. But that said, Energy Pacemakers still have a lot of raw power level when it comes to their heroes and ways to deal with it. It's a fairly even draft, I want to say, slightly favored for Terrorblade. Yeah, I kind of favored theirs as well a little bit. Of course, Naga Siren does need to get some farm, but I have no doubts that he's going to be getting enough EP. 
there's a tiny chance that they're gonna be able to just completely roll over Terrorblade in the early game, but I don't really see that happening unless they really pull off some excellent aggression here. But to actually introduce the lineups as well for Terrorblade on the Radiant side, it's gonna be Dal playing the Peacemaster with Rip Puck on the Earthshaker, Sparrow Kiko to be the Storm Spirit with Xiao on the Naga side, and the last one is gonna be UQ Recuse. On the Keeper of Light. <laughs> Man, that's Something nice. like that. <laughs> uh, for Energy Pace Break, we're going to play playing on the Io. Oh dear, I can't remember the pronunciation of Clockwork's name. Uh, but two. Old Chicken's going to be playing the Lashrak fan on the Tiny. And last but not least, Lying going to be handled by LT. And some of those names just... To be honest, I'm pretty happy about how their names are in general. Because I'm used to much worse when just dealing with Chinese teams. So, I I'm happy most of them are properly readable for us. But at the moment, looks like both teams will be able to just grab one bounty rune, standard stuff. It's Zhao Tule. Okay, there we go. I completely went over my head. The bounty runes are going to go one for either side, going to start out the mid lane on pretty much an even note. That said, I think that Storm Spirit is not really going to be in a true 1v1. He's always going to have some support behind him. Probably the Earthshaker, who right now is just going to look for a Fissure Block on top to help out the Beastmaster's lane, um, or even the Keeper of the Light. The support should be very active in this mid lane. Yeah, we'll see how it's going to work out for them, if they're going to be just active or not. But looks like Earthshaker is hanging about already using a Clarity as well. And the thing is, even if you can't get the kill early on just because Storm Spirit is maybe not the best partner to go for a kill with unless you get the perfect Fisher block, it's still just slowing down Leshrac, if nothing else, just slowing down the bottle and if the bottle is slow, that just means you can't Lightning Storm spam so often. And that in return of course means that Storm Spirit just has an easier time going up close and just getting farmed without taking too much damage. Yeah, Leshrac is going to ferry himself out of self to tide him over until he gets that bottle completed. But let's take a quick look at our other lanes. I have Tiny going to be going up against a Beastmaster, although it's not the greatest of lanes for Beastmaster. He's not going to be zoned out that heavily until the lion actually starts showing his face here. And he's going to do that now, and his lane's going to get a lot harder. A similar story for the Clockwork, but not as bad for him. Nagasar and Coddle, although annoying, it isn't really threatening unless you have that Earthshaker third piece there. They might make a go here. They have a ward down lion. He's closing in as well. He needs to land the Earth Spike, though, they need to land something. Nope, just extra movement speed from the IO. They do go for the Euro Spike, but it's just for Harass. He is going to be dropped down to less than half of his HP, forced to sell up under his tower, and his boar is going to be killed off. Although that's usually not that relevant, it is going to be nice for the sports to just get a little bit of extra gold towards Lion's boots, and uh, IO is actually not going to be going for bottles, so that extra gold towards Soul Ring is also pretty relevant. They'll take anything they can get. Oh, most certainly so, and oh, supports are rotating in. I guess they wanted to secure themselves a rune, but not gonna happen. So it's gonna be just Beastmaster grabbing that one for himself. Definitely happy. Gonna maybe stack those ancients or at least leave the board to do so. And the thing is actually that the supports in the top lane, I think they've only killed one hawk and one board so far, but that's already quite a bit of gold if you're just a support. Oh, bottom lane. There was a fissure, but I think the ensnare illuminate combination before that actually missed. Clockwork actually picks himself up an Orb of Venom for this bottom lane against the Naga Siren. She can't be very comfortably left Clockwork 1v1. Clockwork has one more lasted than the Naga. Yeah, it's actually incredible <laughs> how well Energy Pacemaker are laning. All three of their lanes are doing wonderfully for themselves. Tiny's free farming top, Lushrak is doing about the same in mid, and as you already said, Clockwork is hardly behind the Naga Siren. This advantage early on is going to help them out quite a bit. I'm getting a little bit of lag from the Chinese servers. If it gets too bad, I'll reconnect, but uh, for now it's manageable. Yeah, it's a tiny bit for me as well. For a second I was like, oh, my computer is lagging, but now it reminded me we are on the Chinese servers. But it should be manageable as well for the stream and everything. But yeah, it's actually kind of surprising how heavily the Lishrak is winning the mid lane, especially considering that Euroshaker has been just roaming about the mid lane as well. Just 20 to 9 compared to 10 and 1, so effectively doubling the Storm Spirit. Maybe even a little bit more if you really just count in the denies. Lishrak has... A much better range and also a pretty darn good animation. On top of that, he's going to land a lightning storm as well as stun attack onto the storm spirit. Little Fisher will disengage. Storm spirit barely survives with his life. He also has a damage advantage since he went for no talisman and the storm spirit didn't. So all things around, it's looking pretty good. Down in bottom lane, Clockwork going to be dropped very low, but again is also going to live. So if you're Clockwork now, is this a game you go 
for a bottle, for example. Yes. Just so you can just stay in lane so much more efficiently or effectively. Usually in this game, I'd say you probably don't, but since the Io didn't go for a bottle, instead went for the Sol Ring to make sure that Tiny doesn't get mana leaked out of his combo, having two bottles on your team is always wonderful. And if Clockwork ever wants to get rid of the bottle, finds himself with plenty of mana, if he has like a four staff blade mail or axe, he can always hand the bottle over to the Io. It's a great item to have on that hero. So I think, yeah, that's probably the case, but instead he picks up a Ring of Protection, probably going for Tranquils, maybe a Vassy. Yeah, either of those might be fine. Mid lane, stun, Earthshaker, is he going to end up dying here? The Fissure is not going to be thrown with Vision, that's going to be a kill for Lesh. That felt pretty easy for him, but level 3, uh, Lightning Storm of course already as well. Old Chicken, he's really just played this dominantly, and he took, oh, Clockwork gets a kill bottom lane up against two heroes, and top lane as well. They do get the Avalanche toss, but Beastmaster is just durable enough, but Lion coming in from the side. They get the kill, they get the Hex on Earthshaker, so he can't even Fissure. Earth spike to follow, and that's just suddenly all three lanes losing a hero for Terror Blade. Yeah, this is looking really scary already inside the game. This early lane stage probably couldn't be going much better for Energy Pacemaker. The Naga Siren is still getting a reasonable amount of space, but it's not near enough to make up for the fact that they're effectively losing all three lanes, or at the very least, trading even. Yeah, it's just probably the fact that Earthshaker kind of forced to go into the mid lane because Storm Spirit is struggling. But Earthshaker, once he leaves the bottom lane, it's just suddenly the Clockwork who has already had a rather nice time. He, just, he doesn't care about this uh, Keeper of Light at all. What can the Keeper actually do? Yes, he has a level 1 Illuminate and the Ensnare combination is there. But it's not threatening enough for a Clockwork and now... He has the Hookshot, he has the Lion to help out possibly. They want to go for the Naga. And I think they can. She's not going to be able to get off her images yet. With the battery assault damage taking, she's going to be dropped low. Instead goes for the Riptide. She's still pretty tanky with a large amount of armor. And with the creeps tanking up a lot of this damage, they'll cancel Salp and smack her down. All they need is one auto attack. Will he guess right? The Jukes coming out from Zhao are going to keep him safe. Now he's going to spawn the mirror images and run away. A flare from the Clockwork is level 2 and would be lethal. But 8 seconds until he has that up. The Clockwork didn't even attempt for the hook shot. I'm honestly pretty surprised. And now he might end up going down, taking the tower. Eats Illuminate, one auto tech is all that they need. He's tanking creeps, the Naga Siren's still running away, however, this Clockwork wants it, but has no mana, he's not even trying for the Flare. The Lushrak now joining the fray is going to bump into the Keeper of the Light, and they're going to be able to nuke him down, but Storm Spirit's also in this bottom lane. The stun off the mark, the Storm Spirit will keep on sipping, killing off the Lion, and that's going to be all she wrote. Honestly, I'm really surprised that Clockwork held his hook shot and didn't go for the Rocket Flare snipe on the Naga. You, at the very least, attempt it. Yeah, the greed was just real, I have to say. It was way, way too greedy by them. And in the end, it comes just biting them in the ass, so... Of course, it's not the end of the world still, because Tiny still has excellent farm. 54 last hits compared to the Naga Siren's 30. Already has power threats, 1.1k after that as well. Is it gonna be, like, the standard-ish Agony Scepter rush now after this, or do you even consider a Blink Dagger, for example? I would not be opposed to a Blink Dagger up for the Tiny, but I think the Aghanim Scepter probably is going to be the route for the Tiny. There's a lot of different things that you could go for before getting that Ags, but just in general, what Aghanim Scepter offers Tiny, especially in your safe lane farming position, is a little too good to pass up. Yeah, it's true enough as oh, Beastmaster might be in trouble. There's the Hookshot, lands into the Hawk, but still gets the stun as well, and this should be an easy kill for them, really. Avalanche is used with the toss, and Fan secures the kill for himself. Very easily, too. It's going to keep on being a pretty comfortable game for Energy Pacemaker, even though that dive down towards bottom didn't go as planned. They're still out farming the Storm Spirit and the Naga Siren pretty heavily when it comes to CS. The Lishrak is not exactly doubling up the Storm Spirit, but still doing very well for himself, already sitting on uh, about a third towards his Bloodstone, which is great for him. Now he's going to go for a gank with a little bit of help from the Clockwork. Clock is very low on mana. He's going to need some help from Lashrak if he actually wants to be involved in this. 20 seconds on Arcane Boots, cooldown, and Lash has yet to pop the haze, so he can't offer that support yet either. So, Energy Pacemaker, if you look at the early net worth, they're definitely quite a bit ahead. I mean, 3k in the advantage, same in XP. It's definitely not a small amount as mid lane. Storm Spirit, not the easiest gank target by any means. If they have the Lion, maybe so. But without that, really landing the split turf, Storm Spirit, pretty much at all times, should be able to pull Lightning out of that. Yeah, pretty much. They'll nuke down the Creep Wave and just keep on pushing out. Securing Lushrak 
Uh, as much farm as you could really want. The clockwork would like to be active, but I don't think this is the place to do it. If anything, you smoke in the enemy woods or kill top. So, tower destroyed, clockwork was the one to get the last hit. I guess Leshrac doesn't really need the extra gold anyway, since he's doing well enough for himself. But with the haste rune now, gets himself another bounty rune, fills up the bottle, even more mana for him to use. And of course Clockwork, pretty healthy on the mana himself, even has a clarity if really necessary, and that is the blink for Tiny. Things are gonna get really grim for Terrorblade really soon with this blink now. Yeah, the Avalanche toss combination is nothing to shake a stick at. It's almost at level 9, but oh, he's gonna get fissured, and the jump in from Storm Spirit is enough to kill him. Oh! Sick relocate coming out. It's going to save Tiny's life, although potentially at the cost of Aya's They own. didn't get to relocate all the way back to base, though, so they're actually not getting enough region for now. Finally, they managed to run into there, but it was really a panic relocate, and in the end, it still saves them. Yeah. It's going to end up working out. That was pretty much as close as you could have hoped for. The IO's reaction time was perfect. There is quite a hefty delay, 2.5 seconds. He popped it pretty much immediately as they went onto Fan, and it was just enough. So Tiny Skin and out, deliver himself out the blink. He also bought himself a salve, but he's not actually going to need that with the healing coming out from the IO. And um, as I was saying, this avalanche toss combination is pretty much enough to. 100 to 0, anybody on the side of TB with just a couple of right clicks thrown in. Yeah, Beastmaster is definitely the most durable one at the moment, especially with the Stout Shield helping out as well. But, Grip Puck on your Shaker, maybe trying to just go for a sneaky angle. Illuminate does come through, but not hit anybody, at least not hard enough. It is only level 2 after all, and to be honest, Keeper of the Light, I think the biggest reason he isn't played all that often is that you would really want to have every single of your skills like maxed out, or at least a couple of points into it but uh, you have to make the decision whether to go for illuminate or mana leak for example but if you leave illuminate level one it's usually going to be a little bit too weak but then you can't go for mana leak and so on that's probably like the biggest weakness of the hero that you would really like to use all of your abilities but you just won't get enough levels early on for sure i think as far as supports are concerned he can pick up enough levels if he jungles but all oh, that avatars combo under the storms here going 100 to zero as he's farming inside the woods the space for connell to farm or anybody else for that matter is quickly disintegrating with the threat of relocate kinks and then blinks on top of that fan really is as mobile as you can get the blink is going to accelerate storm not by getting farm per se but just by killing off heroes if he catches eyes on this keeper of light the keeper is 100 percent dead but speaking of dead it looks like it's gonna be the beast master blink avatas right on to him he's gonna be dropped down in a heartbeat you said he was the tankiest hero on terrorblade's team by far but it's not near enough yeah i have to retract that statement it might be the naga siren by now mid lane though naga siren he does have the song to set things up if they want to but of course, if you use this song, it's just going to be a 3 minute cooldown, and that just means that Tiny can easily come without really having to be afraid too much. And even this Lion, up to 1k gold now, if they just continue with him getting supports with every, like, blink avatos combination. Oh, look shot top for Earthshaker. It's going to be the death of him. I uh, really nothing can do if the Clockwork isolates you. It just... Earthshaker, one of those heroes that the cast point on his abilities is too long for it to do anything up against the battery assault. And with this, it's just suddenly Clockwork being extremely close to finishing up his chainmail. And it's going to be definitely helpful, especially if you're up against an Illuminate. Oh, Avatar's Beastmaster! I've seen this story before, it ends the same way this time. Mega kill for fan. So, it's just also lay on the IO running around with a Soul Ring as well as a bottle. It just means they have so much sustained mana, and I guess health-wise as well. Oh, another blink. Doesn't find the target, or does he? Yes, he's gonna get the Keeper of Light. Poor, poor souls. They just can't even help it, man. It's so hard to outrun him, and now Yule Scepter. Will the Splitter follow perfectly? It will, but the Fisher buys enough time, although Toss and the Lightning Storm, they're just getting way too much going for themselves. Terrorblader really just getting outplayed and outmaneuvered inside these fights. A lot of it comes down to... They're heroes, and they're just not battle-ready. The Naga Siren has so much time before she actually becomes relevant. Her radiance is miles away, it seems. She has Aquila Brown Boots and the Quelling Blade. It's not terrible farm, but it's also not good enough to keep up with this Tiny that's currently sitting at 7-0 already, more than halfway towards his Aghanim Scepter. And once he has that Ax, even if Naga Siren gets her radiance, it's not going to be up to save the illusions as they're roaming about the map. This is this is very scary for Terrorblade. Their way back in this game is probably just pickoffs by the storm, but if Energy Pacemaker keeps their, or keeps their supports 
defensively positioned enough, I think they're going to be just fine. This is Energy Pacemaker's game to lose. Oh, most certainly so. It really is just the fact that not only is Tiny this extremely farmed, it's just a Naga Siren. Although he doesn't have horrible farm by any means, it's not great either. So, his just Radiance, it's so far off at the moment and I wouldn't be just surprised in the slightest if he died before actually getting that Sacred Relic even. But there is a smoke. They're just baiting out the Beastmaster, but the thing is, if they bait him out like this, he might die before the others can even react just because Blink Avalanche Toss, you just can't do anything against that. No, it's a straight up kill. You can maybe hope to get the kill on the Tiny after the fact, but actually reacting to that is um, almost impossible. Oh, Naga Siren Song going to be spent. Catches out the Clockwork as well as the Lion. Is there any follow-up for this? They're going to be coming in from the sideline. Zipping from the Storm Spirit going straight onto LT. They roar up the other one onto the side. They'll look for the kill onto the Clockwork. But like have a toss onto the Storm Spirit. It's going to stop that in its tracks. And all monster kills free for a fan. He's not done yet. They found themselves a Naga with no Song, no mana, and hardly any hope. The track is getting kited around in his night time maybe a little bit too hard there's going to be yule scepter but that's not going to stop the echo slam drop straight onto the track very squishy fan didn't drop the avalanche before the toss so it's going to be a little bit hard to kill off Zhao. gets one punch in and that's going to be a godlike spree for this tiny but can he get out alive he's going to drop the toss but it doesn't top up the earth shaker but he still might get this kill punching him down with the clockwork coming in they're going for the dive clockwork has three points into his slur not lethal onto the earth shaker so they're probably just going to fall back but this tiny now is complete agam scepter fisher onto the clockwork but Oh, Rupert, or that's not Rupert either way. Whatever his name is, Earthshaker is in potentially a little bit of trouble. But now that they bring in the Storm Spirit, they could be able to kill off this clock. who stuck around way too long. The Storm Spirit's low, however. Is there any follow up? No. That's going to be the end of a very messy engagement, but the real victor is tiny now with completed eggs. Yeah, it's an extremely early one, especially since you finished up the entire Power Threads plus went for a Blink Dagger. So he's having like as good of a game as he possibly can. Although Leshrak. He did manage to survive the initial dive, but in the end he died to mud golems, whether intentionally or not. I'm gonna have to put my bets on not, but at least he didn't feed away a killing spree, although he doesn't even have one, but didn't feed away any gold to enemy heroes, and oh, Beastmaster! Yeah, that's gonna be the end of you. Or is it? Oh, Fisher does come in. They're gonna have to use the Primal Roar to just save him, but it might even be worth it at this point. He really needs a Necro Book, although... It's not going to be a fast one, so I'm not too sure how effective it will be. It's also not like it costs Tiny much of anything. They just use the Blink Avatar initiation. Although they are going to relocate back to get some more health and everything up for the IO. This Tiny is still an absolute menace. TB don't really have anything to deal with him. He's seeing at 1800 HP. Even if they commit all of their disables and chain them nicely, the follow-up damage just isn't enough when Storm doesn't have that much for the tiny but he has plenty to kill off the lion however there's a finger of death there it's not going to be relevant as he's already spent both of his disables with no help lion is going to end up going down so at least terribly they're getting some kills although they're Blink to jump avatar. Avatar. oh there's no proper toss finally comes out and starts pretty which is too low on mana from the lion jump before so yet another kill and energy pacemaker not only are they just killing supports like this, they're managing to get the kills on the actual heroes they need to keep down. I mean, Storm Spirit definitely just kept down for now. Naga Siren though is up to 2.2k gold, so it's something. Yeah, she hasn't been killed for quite some time. Once you get the Radiance, the dynamic of this game changes quite heavily. It's hard to ever count out a Naga Siren. Uh, inside Dota, but then again, it's also hard when an IO Tiny gets this amount of far to actually combat against it. The Tiny's now sitting on almost enough gold for a full Hyperstone if he wants to just go straight for AC, which honestly, he could probably afford to do, although they're going to Song. This might be enough. The IO's over on the sidelines with Defensive Relocate is keeping his distance. The Shrak's coming in from the south and now, or from the north, excuse me, and a blink out. It's going to be all she wrote. They didn't cancel it, and well, that was pretty much everything blown. Relocate was used, however, but it was a really short distance one. Fan still taking a lot of damage, gets ensnared up as well. But there's the relocate pack, disjointing the illuminate or dodging it. So they are still fine and that's quite a committal from Terrorblade as well. They don't have a primal roar, they don't have a song anymore. So what's to stop energy pacemaker from just taking at least one tower? Not much. I'm gonna try a quick reconnect my um lag was getting to me there, so I can't actually see the game, oh, but hook shot in the meantime. They get the kill on the storm spirit, they might get the hex on Keeper of the Light as well. A nice fisher buys some time, but Keeper of the Light. 
He was actually just standing still for a little bit, awaiting death there. He's like, yeah, no nowhere for me to run. And that's gonna be tier 2 down, plus tier 3 threat. And Avalanche tossed, they need a little bit more damage, and with the splitter that they get. So, three heroes are dead. They have an Aghanim's Tiny with an Io helping out with Overcharge. This might be Rex already. Tiny's sitting on a third HP, but he's still completely comfortable inside their base. Just because of his Rage people, and he has so much defensive support. The melee barracks are getting focused, and TB, can they actually fight? Not without Song or without any initiation. Energy Pacemaker going to respect the fact that TB could turn around to fight. Not the Storm and Beastmaster are going to start respawning, so they're not going to fully commit now, but they get a tier 3, and... Really, there's not much slowing them down. You have a Vladimir's offering for the IO, and usually, although that's a pretty mediocre pickup in uh, normal games, when you have a Tiny on your team, that's pretty much like handing him a free Demon Age, as if Fan needed any extra damage. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, well, he himself and his team definitely wants him to have extra damage, but Terrorblade, seeing that damage, they're gonna be like, oh no, please, please don't do this to us. Just because we're getting to a point where an Avalanche Toss itself might not be enough to get those kills on some certain heroes. But with a couple of extra right clicks with the extra damage, it's just definitely gonna be enough. But Fan does start, Roshan Aya will come in and help. But although Tiny does a lot of damage, it's still not the fastest Roshan because they don't have any minus armor going around. Yeah, it's still going to be sustainable and Terrorblade aren't in a position to defend uh, the Roshan. Even if they were, they don't have Song for 30 seconds. That should be more than enough time for Tiny to take this out and get a second life for the team. I'd personally like to see it on the list track, but even if they give it to the Tiny, no matter who picks it up, it's going to be a great asset to the team. Yeah, let's really destroy it. Oh, yeah. Uh, haste bottled up, so he may just scurry his way towards Roshan when it's just near to being done. We'll just have to see. At the moment, the story of this game is kind of in the net worth chart. The Naga Siren is being outfarmed by every single one of the cores for Energy Pacemaker, and the Io has more farm than the Storm Spirit. The silver lining to this very dark cloud is that Naga Siren does have her radiance. Maybe that's enough to turn things. And actually, there's a Blink Dagger on the Earth How Shaker. How the hell did they get that? I have no idea, but that is incredible. Based on the state of this game, Earth Shaker should not have a 20 minute blink. Yeah, I guess it's just been staying far back. Only has two deaths as well. And. Sometimes just staying alive is enough of gold income and the craziest thing is that they got still a reasonably timed Radiance plus that Blink Dagger without having destroyed a single tower plus being on the back foot heavily so. So really well done. It may be enough to maybe not like win fights comfortably but maybe like break even, burst down one hero to begin with. I mean, Leshrac, although he does have a Bloodstone now, it's still only 1300 health. It should definitely be manageable for Terrorblade to just get the kill like that. Even though in a vacuum it's an okay timed Radiance, you're up against a Tiny with Blink, Ags, and now a Moon Shard. This is very, very scary. With the extra attack speed for Moon Shard and the IO, the buildings are going to absolutely melt. And with Aegis, he's completely safe in doing so. He'll start working on some heroes it seems Blink Avatoss on the poor keeper of light they're going to try to focus down those tracks it's the right target to go on but glimmered up and relocated out they're going to save his life now Tiny is going to start smacking him down with the finger of death the storm sphere is nothing more than a crater and the melee barracks are soon going to suffer a similar fate where they'll just go for the heroes fans gonna lose his Aegis but gets the Beastmaster in trade and with a beyond godlike spree a double kill and with one barracks going their way at 22 and a half minutes and energy pacemaker are looking to clear out this victory uh, Terrorblader for like, we maybe still have it, although if there are already two racks behind this early on, I would just start thinking about the GG call in my head. Although, I don't think they're gonna do it quite yet, and so, oh, there's the song, they will try to set up for something, but will they even, well, the Illuminate will come, but is it really gonna do anything? They even glimmer up the tiny for good measure. Two barracks, although Naga Siren in theory can come back against Mega Creeps and against a huge barracks deficit, not a Naga Siren with just Naked Radiance. You need Mantis style, Heart, Boots of Travel before that really becomes feasible. So this game is very, very close to over. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There's really not much to sugarcoat. Yeah, it's just if you look at the items or the lack thereof. Terrorblade, finally they get the Necro level 1, but it's 23 minutes in, what's a Necro level 1 gonna do? Just feed extra gold and extra XP to Energy Pacemaker, pretty much. What's the dream scenario for the fight coming out from Terrorblade, and is it enough to kill off any bait for Energy Pacemaker? So the dream scenario is, oh, they get the Avalanche Toss, and will they get the kill? Yes, Storm Spirit is down, 
But I guess the dream scenario is, first of all, energy base make a grouping really tight together for a nice Echo Slam. Then they need to illuminate to follow a primal roar that stuns the one target and probably damages and pushes back the others at the same time. Something crazy like that, but I really think for a dream scenario they also suddenly need a sixth hero that is a dark share that just pulls everybody together. Fair enough. Oh, and they definitely don't need the Snogga Siren getting picked off. No song, no mana, no hope. That's going to be the end of her life. And you know, if it wasn't apparent already, yeah, that's the end of the game. Gigi going to be called <laughs> up by the Storm Spirit. Well played to Energy Pacemaker. There really was never a point in this game where it felt like they didn't have momentum. Very well controlled by them. Yeah, just from the laning phase onwards. Or, I mean, not even onwards from that point, but just from the start. They made every lane work. Especially surprising was the Clockwork having the same amount or more farm than the Naga Siren on that lane. So, just really outplayed and outclassed, I suppose. And of course... Maybe they could have done something differently, laning-wise, or Beastmaster just played a little bit more safe. I, I can't even say for sure, but Energy Pacemaker, they take the win here, and this, I think, uh, was the second to last series we're going to have our match, because I do believe we have one more best of one coming up. One more best of one, and uh, let's go ahead and check what that is. I believe it's going to be Terrorblade playing yet again against Dream Gaming, so be back here in about an hour. Yeah, maybe they're going to start early, I'm not too sure how it actually works with this, if they're going to just wait for us and wait for everybody, but we're going to be here for sure, we're going to let you know, or you're going to find out when it starts. I'm not even going to close the stream, I may host over to Hefla TV 1 though, because there is still Dota ongoing there as well, it is the so-called mainstream for this, and actually a game ended for them just now as well, so there might be some doubt downtime for both streams, but guys, just some music in between, and... Hope to see you for the next one then.